brother, the Reverend Alfred Appella. Amen. Amen. Thank you very much, Provost. Let's appreciate our Provost. This morning I stand before two of my very key friends who have been very instrumental in impacting my ministry. From the time I, we met with them, God has been very, God has used them quite profoundly. Um, of course, one of them is our provost. Most of you don't know this. Some of you have only met him as provost. But I can tell you that uh, Canon Heavens have been used by God to really impact many lives, me being one of, the, one of them. But of course, I can't forget to appreciate Canon Richard, who right now is spearheading a very powerful ministry called Anglicans Missions Africa, doing a lot of outreach. Let's appreciate them with a beautiful haircut. And by the way, we are, in, we are releasing a team of 13 next week to go to the Diocese of South Nyanza for mission, and they're in this service. I'll be requesting them to, uh, to be, uh, to, to, uh, after this service, towards the end of this service, we shall be praying for you. So if you know you're accompanying the team of 13 who are going to the Diocese of South Nyanza for mission from Tuesday, kindly, after, uh, after we shall be praying for you after uh, this ministration for the glory of God. Amen. This morning, friends, we are looking at the assurance of victory. And why are we looking at the assurance of victory? And we shall be looking at it in the basis in the book of Romans. And we are looking at this because whether you like it or not, we live in a world that is full of uncertainties. Many of you have gathered in this place and you're not certain about many things. You, some of us are uncertain about our health situations. You've just received a diagnosis about a serious health condition that you have and you're not certain about what is going to happen. You've just been, you've, you've, you've just gone through a situation and the doctors have given you a bad report. Now there are others who are also here who are going through some financial uncertainties. You just lost your job. Um, you are switched, you are swapped at your place of work. You are not sure whether that job is going to happen. Your business is going down. Your finances are being interrupted. Others are going through relational uncertainties. You came here and yesterday you just quarreled with your spouse. You had been dating for six years. Yesterday was not the best of days for you. You went on a date and she showed you a blackout. Can you identify with what I'm talking about? How many can identify with what I'm talking about? Of course, you can't raise your hand, I know. <laughs> it is because we are actually living in a world full of uncertainties. The other day in New York City, they actually woke up to an earthquake. They were not expecting that earthquake, you know? But boom, earthquake. It was so uncertain, so unexpected, you know? The point is that in life, we are faced with challenges. We are faced with things in life that leave us feeling overwhelmed, they leave us feeling discouraged, they leave us feeling defeated, Sometimes they leave us feeling helpless. Why? Because as long as you're in this human body, as long as you are living and breathing in this human body, you will be faced by uncertainties. But as you explore the book of Romans chapter 8, Paul begins to actually release some certain level of revelation on how we deal with these uncertainties. You know? Because as you go through the book of Romans, you notice 
after Paul speaking about the justification by faith and going through, I mean, I mean I, I, trying to actually demystify the observance of the law, later on he actually brings in a very serious thought here. He begins to show the Romans that, hey, even though there are things that are uncertain, and many uncertainties that happen in life as a human being, there are things that scripture declares, that Paul declares here, that gives Christians, you and me today, assurance amidst all these uncertainties. Romans 8.28 says this. I love this. It says, and we know that all things work together for good. For them that love the Lord. To them who have been called according to his purpose. When we are discussing and talking about assurance of victory, what we are actually saying today is that the real assurance of a Christian who loves the Lord is plain. That all things work together for good. How many things? No, I can't hear you. How many things? That means that amidst all your troubles and situations that you go through, amidst that which you're faced with this morning, the assurance of salvation, the, I mean, the assurance of victory that you have today is that all things are working for your good. So help me look at your neighbor and tell your neighbor, it's working for your good. Amen. I lost my first girlfriend. Hello? Today I'm married with two children. Hello? So even if he left you, don't worry, you'll get another one. Tell your neighbor it's working for your good. Hallelujah. I said it is working for your good. You know, I stand here as a servant of God to remind you that it is working for your good. The loss of your job is okay. Let it go. It is working for your good. Why is it working for your good? I like the words of John. Let me just go back in the second reading. John says <laughs> that everyone who believes that Jesus Christ is born of God and everyone who loves the Father loves his child as well. And then he says, verse 2, this is how we know that we, are, we, that we love the children of God, but that, that, we are, that we love the, the children of God by loving God and carrying out his commandments. That means when you are a child of God and you love God and you keep his commandments, then these things are working for your good. Hallelujah. All these uncertainties are working for your good. I like the story of Joseph from the book of Genesis. Sold into slavery by his brothers, um, wrongly accused, imprisoned, but yet amidst all these things, the good was coming out. You know? I don't know whether you've been betrayed. I have been betrayed. Have you, have you ever been chomewa, for lack of a better word, umechomewa? Hello? Ask your neighbor, umechomewa? It is, it is working for your good. As long as you work, you love Christ, these uncertainties will work for your good. For the, so the first reason why we are assured of victory in Jesus Christ is because we love God. When you're a lover of God, then things are working for your good. If you do not love God, then unfortunately, you may not have, you may not be able to understand the end, your end. But as long as you're here and you love the Lord with your heart, then it is for your good. I was reflecting um, about the story of Lazarus. Lazarus loved Jesus. He was a friend of Jesus. He got sick, but because he still loved Jesus and he was a friend of Jesus, scripture declares that Jesus declared that this thing will not end in death. He went from bad to worse. But because he loved Jesus, Jesus still loved him. His situation was working for his good. His enemies came, spoke very bad about him, bound him and 
buried him and closed the to him in a tomb to forget about him. Have you ever been forgotten? Have your friends ever thrown you away? <laughs> Even though they forgot him, his lover never forgot him. Jesus is the lover of your soul, and as long as he's the lover of your soul, I'm here, I'm here to stand and tell you, it is for your good. I even wish my sermon today was, it was for your good. Shida ya waisi siwa injilisti tunapendaka tu mustari moja. It is for your good. Bwana sifi wa sana. Ninge ichambua yo, it is for your good. Maka tumalize, but let me be expository. Hallelujah. All right. Verse 29 and 30 says this. Of Romans chapter 8. Declares. For those that God foreknew, he also predestined to be conformed to the image of his son, that he, that he might be the firstborn among many brothers and sisters. And those he predestined, he also called. And those he called, he also justified. And those that he justified, he also glorified. I want to say this, friends, that God in his infinite wisdom foreknew and predestined us to be conformed to the image of his son. Now the second reason why we experience assurance of victory is that God has, pre has predestined us to be conformed in the image of, in, of Christ. He has predestined us according to his purpose. Now what is, does it mean to be predestined? To be predestined, to be predestined means that your destiny has been settled in advance. God has already settled your destiny, especially for those who love God. Your destiny has been settled. So what you're living today is just a chapter of your life. Some of you are in chapter 2. Others are in the pit, chapter 3. Others have been dumped, chapter 4. Others have lost their job, chapter 5. Maybe your book is ending in chapter 10. Today you're living your chapter 8 because you lost your job. But thank God, your chapter 10 is coming. Hallelujah. Tell the neighbor, neighbor, my destiny is with my God. He loves my soul. Hallelujah. And so nobody can write your destiny. God has already written it. Because you are the lover of his soul. And he loves you. You don't joke with lovers. One time I was walking in Nyeri and somebody tried to joke with my wife. Hallelujah. She crossed the road and she, she, she saw a very beautiful dress. And she, she dashed to go and see that dress in that shop. So, so I told her, okay, well, I'll wait, I'll wait for he, you from out. And then when she walked out of the shop, out of this place, a certain guy, hallelujah, decided to run to her and begin to bully her. And my wife was very confident, just walking, and this guy is trying to bully her. And I'm looking at this guy, I'm saying, way, way. Hallelujah. That's the time you pray for the restraining anointing. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. And as she continued doing that, I marched towards him and said, way. How that man crossed the road that day. Praise the Lord. Under the running anointing. Hallelujah. Why? Because you don't joke with lovers. And my wife would walk around there because she felt loved. In the same way, God protects you. He fights the enemy because he loves you. And because he has settled your destiny, the enemy cannot interfere with your future. There's this song I like singing. Because he lives, I can face tomorrow. Because he lives, my is God. Because I know he holds my future. You lost your job this morning, he holds your future. You lost your friend this morning, he still holds your future. 
You lost your, you lost your business. You know, he still holds your future. Hallelujah. Holds it. He holds it. Nothing can separate you and me from the love of Christ. Oh, I love this. We have that assurance of victory. One, because you love God. When you love God and he loves you, then you know you have an assurance of victory. Number two, because he has already settled your destiny in advance. Rev, I love God, but my brother, my husband is behaving in a very queer way. Don't worry. Keep on praying. Keep on holding on God. One day, God will unlock him as an evangelist. Praise the Lord. Amen. Verse 31. What then shall we say in response to these things? If God is for us, <laughs> if God be for us, say again, if God be for us, say again, if God be for us, <laughs> your sickness, it doesn't matter. No, no which doctor has enough charms to deal with your destiny. Hallelujah. Nobody has, you know, there are times you meet people who wish you bad. Have you met those people? They just wish you bad. Nobody has enough wishes to destroy your future. <laughs> Why? Because for you to experience assurance, uh, that assurance, the reason why we are assured of God's victory is because the love of Christ to you, the love of Christ for us cannot be broken. Cannot be broken. He loves you. And sometimes when he loves you, he, he allows you to go through very tight situations. You don't have an explanation. To, you know, the other day I was reading the book of Jeremiah and I was, I, when Jeremiah was told, arise and go to the porter's house. And I was trying to imagine how the porter deals with the pots. You know? He steps on those things and he's... And makes a beautiful vessel out of the pot. But if that pot is very... Comes out a small mistake, he, he actually crumbles it. There's a, a, very, a Greek word called banjo. Praise the Lord. Tell your neighbor banjo. Hallelujah. It's a Greek word. It means... To destroy that pot. Hallelujah. He banjos. Hallelujah. He destroys that pot. And then he begins to fix it again. To a better vessel. And some of you right now are in that banjoing state. Ask your neighbor, are you banjoed? Hallelujah. You could be that in a banjo state. And people are laughing at you because you are in that banjo state. Banjo means to be de destroyed. But when the porter decides to crush you and mold you into a different vessel, though they may laugh at you today, you will come out a better vessel. Hallelujah. Because there is assurance of victory. Put your hands on your chest and say, Lord, I am assured of victory. Because you love me. Because you've settled my destiny. And because your love for me is unbreakable. Even if they come and somebody comes and tells you, today we are breaking it. That relationship. I have a God in heaven who has never broken that love. Hallelujah. He loved me even when I never knew how to dress. He still loved me. Hallelujah. When I was broke, he still loved me. Hallelujah. Today you are here. You are at a bus fair. Hallelujah. 
He loves you. He loves you. You know? There's something we call carpooling. But nowadays, people have mastered another pooling called house pooling. Just jumping into somebody's house, you don't have a place to live. Where are your friends? You know, somebody has come to live with you. Don't despise that person. Yes. Hallelujah. Amen. Don't despise that person who is living with you today. Hallelujah. Yes. As long as that person loves God, his destiny is settled. Today you will house him. Tomorrow he will house you. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Assurance of God's victory. Everybody at the sound of my voice this morning, as long as you love the Lord to, together with those that are watching us on TV, I'm telling you today, as long as you keep God's commandments and you love God and God loves you and God loves you, everything happening in your life today and now is for your good. Hallelujah. I don't prophesy a lot, but today I am in the office of a prophet. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. It is working for you. For your good. So what do we say today? As we reflect on these scriptures in Romans chapter 8, as simply as I've brought them out, we need to remain committed to the unshakable faith that is manifested through the word of God. The challenge we face nowadays is that it is very easy to waver. But Abraham did not waver. I love the story of Abraham. When you read Romans chapter 1 and you, you, the Bible, you all the way to chapter 4, Paul brings about the story of Abraham. And he says this man did not waver in, in faith. In chapter 4 he says he kept believing God. You know? He kept believing God that the end would be great. And maybe you just walked in church today and you just want to believe God that your end will be great. I want to stand to tell you that the, regardless of the trials you face, stand firm. Stand firm. I want to request that you rise on our feet. Stand firm. Stand firm. Stand firm. Stand firm. Stand firm. Stand firm. I've gone through so much as a child of God. I've gone through a lot, but I've stood firm. Many years back, I was preaching, I was preaching at St. Jerome Gatwikira. Canon, then he was reverend. He had just invited me to, to the revival meetings. And then on my way to his service, some nefarious men picked my phone. Hallelujah. I told him, my phone is gone. Hallelujah. But it was working for my good. After one week, I got a better phone. Praise the Lord. Amen. You lost your phone today, get ready for a better phone. If you don't say amen, shall yako. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. <laughs> today, I want to make a very simple altar call, very quickly. I know there are people who came into this service and you're going through some stuff. Um, some threatening stuff that have tried to make you lose your faith. You know, we're going to do something very crazy today. We're going to thank God for those situations. Hallelujah. You lost your job. You lost your friend. Um, you're going through a, a, a certain uncertainties in your life. Today, my altar call, the altar call is just simple. Wherever you are, you can give thanks to God. I, I don't know if there are people in this place who are saying, Rev, I would want to just give thanks to God for my situation. Just shoot up that hand and say, Rev, Rev, I'm going through stuff. And I'm just want to 
I just want to give thanks for this situation. God bless you. I see those hands. I just want us to thank God for that. I want to thank God for you, by the way. Amen? Would you hook up your faith with me as I thank God for you? Right? That it is working for your good? Raise up your hand. Because he lives, I can face to God. Because he lives, oh fear is gone. Because I know he holds my future, and life is worth the living just because. Keep on raising your hands if you're singing that song one more time. watching us online and on TV hook up your faith with us as we pray together Father in the name of Jesus this morning we thank you so much for the assurance of victory 
We are grateful to you, Lord, that by virtue of our faith in Jesus Christ, we are assured of victory because of your love for us. We are assured of victory because you have already settled our destiny in advance. Assured of victory because your love for us is unbreakable. Heavenly Father, I thank you for these that are raising their hands. These that are going through very difficult moments in their lives. Lord, today, we pray, O oh God, for strength, grace, and assurance. That by your spirit, you'll remind each one of us that your grace is sufficient. That God, this that is happening in our lives is happening for our good. I pray for those who are here among us who've lost their jobs, who have gone through a strained relationship, who have gone through an accident and Lord, they're wondering what's happening. Those watching on TV and in the hospital, oh God, and they're wondering, God, why am I in this bed? What's going on? Today, Lord, we thank you for that assurance that God, it is working for our good. I pray, Almighty God, that you bless each one of us in a special way, those watching and those raising their hands here. And Spirit of God, may you continue to move in their lives in a special way. We give you thanks, we honor, and magnify your name. This we pray in Jesus' precious name. Amen. Let's give Jesus a beautiful praise offering. Hallelujah. Turn to two or three people, tell them it is for your good. Second, it is for your good. Come on. <laughs> yes, allow me to invite the provost. Let's appreciate him with a hand clap as he comes. Amen. Uh, just let us sit down. Just one more prayer and then uh, we give our offerings. You feel that you've been so distant uh, from God and that the reason why you're struggling to attain victory is because you have been out of step with God. Maybe you know deliberately you've been sinning and the face of God is against you. Just from where you are, we'll pray with you just from where you are. And you feel, say, Pasi, for me, I just want